Krupal. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. And uh, if you have time, please take some time to visit us at uh, www.drpaul.org. That is the, our new website address, drpaul.org. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, Wegener's granulomatosis. It's a deadly disease if you leave it untreated. And we know those uh, triads. The classic triad we see in this disease is upper respiratory tract involvement and uh, lower respiratory tract disease and glomerulonephritis. So that is the important point you need to remember. It is a small vessel vasculitis. That's the inflammation in the small vessels like arteries and veins and arterioles. And it predominantly involves those three places, upper respiratory tract, lower respiratory tract, and kidneys. And the other important point you need to remember is this disease is characterized by ANCOS. ANCOS against proteinase 3 and ANCOS against myeloperoxidase. And the kidney disease often rapidly progressive. If you do not treat these patients, they often develop kidney failure. Now let us uh, talk about a few minutes about uh, the incidence. This disease affects like uh, 12 people per million per year. So it's uh, not a common disease. But once it comes and if you leave it untreated, like uh, if you do not use steroids or cyclophosphamide, they develop rapid kidney failure and die. Now, this, this disease is one of the ANCA-related vasculitis. You remember microscopic polyangiitis or uh, uh, Churgostras syndrome. Similarly, this disease is associated with uh, ANCOS, and it, is, uh, it can actually go into granulomatous uh, lesions uh, of both upper and lower respiratory tract and glomerulonephritis, and uh, then ensues other organ failure. Now, as I said, this is a fatal disease. The survival rate is less than one year. If you do not treat it, it is just one year. And this disease affects mostly in fourth and fifth decades of life, and it affects both sexes equally. Both men and women get this disease in the same ratio. Now, this disease usually develops over four to 12 months with 90% of patients presenting with upper or lower respiratory symptoms or both. Upper respiratory tract symptoms can include like nasal congestion, sinusitis, otitis media, mastoiditis, inflammation of the gums. So upper respiratory symptom uh, can involve sinusitis, otitis media, mastoiditis, inflammation of the gums. Then lower respiratory tract can involve, that's lung involvement, causing cough and uh, shortness of breath and uh, uh, sometimes uh, hemoptysis when the uh, vessels are inflamed severely. And these patients often develop a migratory oligoarthritis, the pains involving large joints, and ear problems, uh, sorry, eye problems like uh, scleritis and uh, episcleritis and uh, uveitis. So you see the uh, range of organs involved that involve this disease. Uh, but primarily the triad is always something we should remember. That is, uh, it involves basically the upper respiratory tract, lower respiratory tract, and kidneys. Now, when it involves the cartilage, when you look at these patients from the side, you will see the saddle nose. That is, uh, the nose turns like this because of the destruction of the nasal cartilage. Newly acquired uh, hypertension is not a problem, is, uh, is rare in this. You, you remember in uh, other diseases like Churgostras syndrome, polyarthritis, noroza, they develop hypertension, but here that is a rare phenomenon to happen. Now, kidney disease will develop in the majority of uh, untreated patients. You remember that some of the questions come from the area. Now, let us talk a few minutes about uh, tests and urinalysis. You go by the organs involved, the lungs are involved. So what test do you do? A CT scan of the chest probably will reveal the nodules and the masses that form in the lungs. So CT chest is an important test. Coming to serology, ANCOS, 
there are several different types of uh, anchors recognized, but there are two anchors that are important in this disease. Number one, again, is the proteinase 3, that is PR3. Number two, anchor again is the myeloperoxidase. Remember those points. ANCOS developed against PR3 and ANCOS developed against myeloperoxidase. These two types of ANCOS are, uh, are extremely common in this uh, disease. Uh, you can also see perinuclear P ANCOS, uh, but uh, those, the, the, the uh, MPO ANCOS and uh, PR3 ANCOS are most common in this disease. Now, let me talk uh, a few minutes about uh, uh, treatment. As I said, this is uh, an invariably fatal disease if you do not treat these uh, symptoms. But if you start treatment, they will have a lot of recovery. Many people live for years and years after they are started on uh, steroids and uh, uh, cyclophosphamide. As I said, CT scan chest is uh, very sensitive. It, uh, you can detect nodules and masses and cavities using the CT scan. And then you can also do biopsy looking for the histological changes in the lungs and uh, kidneys. And based on those things, you can establish the severity of this disease. And once you establish that, you can go ahead with the treatment of these uh, patients. So you start with the uh, steroids. You see, steroids are a God's gift in this uh, disease because before steroids, before cyclophosphamide, people used it to die. I mean, the prognosis was very, very dismal in this disease. But now we have steroids and the cyclophosphamide. There is a dramatic improvement in uh, their uh, recovery from this disease. But cyclophosphamide, you know, it, uh, it has its own side effects. So when you treat these patients with the steroids and cyclophosphamide, you should always think about the side effects, the long-term side effects. Cyclophosphamide and prednisone, uh, they are now the standard for remission induction. And consequently, the current approach to remission uh, induction in severe cases is to use cyclophosphamide. And you use cyclophosphamide like uh, three to six months. So three to six months cyclophosphamide and uh, you give it daily by mouth. That is the standard treatment in this disease. So uh, make sure that you use uh, steroids and uh, uh, cyclophosphamide. And there are other drugs like uh, methotrexate and uh, azathioprine. So you can also use methotrexate and uh, azathioprine. Uh, but uh, most commonly, the treatment is steroids and cyclophosphamide. So remember those points and uh, please take some time to visit us at uh, www.drpaul.org. That is our new website, www.drpaul.org. We have posted hundreds of videos uh, for patients and uh, for USMLE and uh, for uh, health information videos, even for uh, other health professionals. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.